Hi, my name is Akhita Ashok. I am working as the uh, Assistant Wildlife Internship Manager here at Rescate Wildlife Sanctuary in Alajuela, Costa Rica. I did my Master's in Applied Animal Behaviour and Animal Welfare from the University of Edinburgh. I just graduated last year and I came here to work. I feel like I'm really able to implement what I learned in my Master's in terms of uh, wild animal behaviour and welfare and I'm actually able to help the animals here and I think it's just been a great experience of actually applying my knowledge of what I learned and I, even learning more in the process. Um, the past three months have been um, absolutely amazing and I, I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity to come and work here and work with new species and um, species that I've never worked with before in my life, work with programs that allows these endangered species um, get released back into the wild and I think it's just super cool what Rescate does in terms of conservation and conserving biodiversity of Costa Rica for these animals. It's one of the biggest wildlife uh, sanctuaries in Central America and it's also the only sanctuary that's accredited by the GFAS which is the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So um, the work that they do here is very very focused on the welfare of the animal which you don't see in many other rescue centers that are in different parts of the world and uh, coming here is just going to give you like a really nice world view of what animal welfare is, what new world biodiversity is, uh, what exactly we're doing to protect and conserve. So most of the animals here, we enrich them on a daily basis. We've got primates, we've got mammals, and we've got felines. We've got other animals too, but these are the animals that we most work with in terms of enrichment. Um, the volunteers and interns that come in here, they, they help us you know, in building new enrichment, coming up with new enrichment ideas and enriching the animals and um, it would really be hard to do any of uh, the work that we do without them. So what is enrichment? Enrichment is basically something that we use. It can be environmental, it can be something we've built out of env environmental materials. We've got a lot of different things that have already been constructed in our enrichment room. These animals are in captivity. They were either kept as pets in homes or they were rescued from the illegal wildlife trade or they've been brought into us from different accident cases. And for some reason, the vets and the behaviorists and the biologists have deemed them to be not releasable back into the wild. Maybe because they don't respond to predator calls, maybe because they don't have uh, foraging behaviors and also they have a lot of stereotypical behaviors and all of these behaviors we try to pre prevent them by enriching the animals so enrichment is one thing we can do to make sure that these stereotypical behaviors do not occur or at least they occur lesser basically it's to make them less stressed so we enrich them uh, with different things with fruit with sensorial things with habitat things basically get them to use their, their senses and their cognitive thinking. Uh, so we do three different types of enrichment depending on the day. So we, have, so we have alimentation, which is food. We've got cognitivo, which is cognitive. And we've got habitat, which is obviously habitat enrichment. So yeah, that's basically a bit about what enrichment is. And uh, it's something that Rescate takes really seriously uh, because we want to make sure that even though they're in captivity, their lives and are, are not as stressed as they usually are. Observations is also another thing that we take really seriously at Rescate. We use an app called Zoo Monitor, which only a very couple of special zoos and sanctuaries all over the world have access to. This app has really been really, really helpful in helping us record the behavior of our animals. But depending on the animal, we input a different number of behaviors on the app which help us sort of record what exactly they're up to. So when the interns come in, we, we show them how to handle the app and then we do observations with them. We use binoculars sometimes if we can't really see the animals because we want to see exactly what they're doing. We want to like zoom in exactly on their face and see exactly what they're doing at that point of time. And after we, we record uh, the observation and the observation is done, um, we basically compile a report of data and in that report that comes from Zoom Monitor, we have a bit of an idea about the behaviors that the animals are usually doing. If there is too much abnormal behavior, if there is too much stereotypical behavior, what part of the enclosure they are using more. And depending on this, it gives us basically a lot of data to see how we can enhance the enclosure. How if there's a lot of stereotypical behavior, we can sort of 
put more things in, in, in the enclosure or see what other enrichment that we can do, come up with different ideas. We've got sometimes three or four animals in one enclosure and sometimes not all of them get along. The group dynamics change. So we do observations regularly to see how the group dynamics are, if the group dynamics have changed, if there are certain um, you know, problems between one or two of the monkeys in the group or the coyotes in the group or the birds in the group. So it's really, really important to do observations with the animals because that's the only thing that gives us proper data of what's exactly happening with them. So in Rescate, we also have a Scarlet Macau breeding center. Uh, in the breeding center, we actively work on releasing the, the pigeons of the, of the, of the couples that, that have already bred back into the wild because there used to be a point of time in Costa Rica about a couple of years ago where scarlet macaws were almost endangered. Uh, but now because of our conservation efforts, we can slowly start to see them being reintroduced back into the wild. And, and you know, uh, the laws in Costa Rica on hunting these macaws and other animals have also gotten a lot stricter. So I think what we do in the breeding center is really, really cool. Um, but behind the scenes, we need to take care of the animals that um, are in the breeding center. So taking care of them uh, and making sure that they are going to breed well and the season is right and everything, it depends mainly on the diet. So we need to make sure the diet of these animals is really good on a daily basis. And there is someone that, is, that stays there with them and takes care of them on a daily basis. But sometimes uh, our interns and, and we as well, we, we do it so that, uh, you know, the interns also get the experience of what exactly we feed them. It's more of like husbandry duties. We have an entire day where we make breakfast for them, make lunch for them, clean all the bowls at the end of the day uh, for almost 170 macaws. Um, so that's a bit about the things that we do with the macaws, uh, the scarlet macaws and the green macaws at the breeding center. Our animal keepers, they work tirelessly almost 12 to 13 hours a day sometimes because that's how dedicated they are to the work that they do. And uh, none of the animals here would, would be okay without them. So really we have to give all of our credit to them. So they sort of, uh, so we have this thing called the feeding route, which is something we do with the interns. So in the feeding route, basically one of the managers uh, accompany the interns with one of the animal keepers towards the end of the day. Uh, where we um, go with the keepers and we get a close look as to how they feed the animals um, and the feeding route includes the, the greasins, the felines, the farm animals. We see exactly what kind of nutrition, what kind of diet they're being given and follow them around and it's a really cool experience you ha to, to have because you are in very close proximity to the animals so you get to see exactly how they know that it's time for food and how they make their way towards the inside enclosures. And yeah, um, that is also something really cool that we have here that you would get to experience when you come and intern with us. And I think it's just a fabulous experience overall. So I really encourage people also in, in parts of Asia and other parts of the world to come and participate and do these internships because I really think it's, um, it's an experience of a lifetime.